Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, and yes, the replay's bugged again. No enemy team lineup displayed, both here, prior to the battle, and in the battle itself, but don't worry, I've enabled the team lineups on the left and right hand side of the screen so you can at least have some idea of exactly what it is that today's hero is facing. This is... Thoria? I think that's how that's supposed to be pronounced. We're just going to call him Thor. This is Thor in a Tier 9 battle here on the Two Brothers map, in the Tier 9 British battle cruiser HMS Duncan. And yes, I know it's Two Brothers, but don't get excited, right? It's not that kind of Two Brothers game, even though the middle of the map is beckoning enticingly at us. This isn't Flambass. Um, <laughs> it's actually become something of a meme. Now, any time Flambass plays and he gets this map, his audience expects him to drive straight up the middle, Regardless of the ship that he's in, um, it's become... Yeah, he's, I'm not going to go so far as to say he's sorry he started this Two Brothers Middle Rush meme, but I think he's probably sorry he started this Two Brothers Middle Rush meme, because even if he's in a ship that isn't really suited for it, he's still expected to do it. The amusing thing is that, I mean, even if he isn't in a ship that's suited for it, he somehow still usually finds a way to pull it off. <laughs> but Thor here who is also not in a ship that's really suited for this, is not going to be trying a middle rush. Even though we are here on Two Brothers, and even though the middle's right there in front of him, just begging for it. Uh, because the Duncan is not really a battleship, even though it's in the British battleship tech tree. It's a battle cruiser. This is a G3 battle cruiser design, it was never built, uh, proposed after the end of the First World War. Now it does have battleship guns, although the turret arrangement, as you can see, is kind of weird. Very First World War-y. Um, those are 419mm guns. They are very big guns, and they are very good guns. But while the ship is fast, with a top speed of 32 knots, you don't put guns that big, in turrets that big, on a hull, and get the ship up to 32 knots without making some sacrifices. And those sacrifices were, of course, in the armour protection. As Admiral Jellicoe famously remarked at the Battle of Jutland in the First World War, uh, when the Royal Navy battle cruisers started exploding after they were put in the battle line with the battleships and subjected to fire from German battleships, there seems to be something wrong with our battle cruisers today. Yes, they're trading shots with battleships, which is something they were never designed to do, although there were other issues as well. Very, very sloppy ammunition handling procedures, for example, but uh, yeah. You don't send battle cruisers to fight battleships. That's not what they're for. Oh, that enemy Talon made it into safety by the skin of his teeth, but he's tucked in behind that island now. He should be relatively safe. Unless he does something stupid, of course. <laughs> not quite as tucked in as he probably imagines he is. He's not actually sticking his ass out, is he? Okay, he's gone undetected. But we have a pretty good idea of where he is. Shots out. They are looking fairly good. And there's the first blood award. <laughs> oh dear. Oh well, never mind. Yeah. The, the whole idea behind the battle cruiser concept, and it wasn't a bad concept, providing you actually use them properly. Oh hello, there's an airstrike coming in here. And he's kind of stationary. This is probably gonna hurt. Um we shot down six aircraft, but it didn't really appear to make a whole lot of difference, did it? He did take a bit of a spanking there. And he's continuing to shoot down aircraft now that it doesn't actually matter anymore because they've already got the strike off. Oh well, it makes him feel better, I suppose. But anyway, yes, the whole idea behind the battlecruiser concept was you give them enough speed that they can run away from and not fight things that outgun them, like proper battleships. You don't send them in to fight proper battleships. And the boogies on low health like that absolutely definitely shouldn't be coming out from behind cover right in front of ships that have proper battleship guns because that was the other thing about the battle cruiser concept and yes, that was his second kill. Um, fast enough to run away from anything that can outgun them and big enough guns to kill anything that they couldn't run away from. So, mostly enemy cruisers. Battle cruisers were cruiser hunters. Speaking of which, hello Mr. Baltimore. 
Are you the enemy team's last remaining radar? I do believe you are. Actually, I'm not entirely sure. Because, you know, replay bug. How many cruisers do they have left? Three. Baltimore's one of them. They have an Albemarle. And they have something Pan-Asian. So yes, that is the enemy team's last remaining radar. Oh yeah, check out the torpedoes. Did you see the way that torpedo... This is normal, by the way, on the Duncan and British battle cruisers. And yes, that torpedo nearly hit the ship that launched it. <laughs> Which I suppose would have been embarrassing. Well, the Baltimore's had the sense to back off. And yeah, the enemy team actually have two carriers. One of them's a Kearsarge. Are you guys going to join in? Look at the Harlem on the minimap. Behind that island, down to the southeast. That's one well-protected aircraft carrier he's parked next to. <laughs> Literally no use to the team alive. Oh, a Kearsarge. One of those hybrid nasties that Wargaming appear to be so keen on recently. Now, if that was a regular battleship of that kind of range, that would have been a double citadel. But of course, because it's got a flight deck, <laughs> you're not allowed to score citadels on it. The fun police ruin your fun. It doesn't work the other way around. Although I have to say that Kearsarge is not exactly making things difficult for Thor here. Nevertheless, he is in a battle cruiser. Battle cruisers are cruiser killers. So he wants to kill himself some cruisers. Shots out, and he's tucked in behind the island here, so the Kearsarge can't actually shoot at him. Although there's no danger of the Kearsarge actually using its main gun battery turrets on him, even though he is just in a battle cruiser and those main gun batteries could slice through his bows like a hot knife through. But oh wow, he did. But of course, he's firing high explosive. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> even when I'm wrong, I'm right. <laughs> and he's still giving broadside, but you're not allowed to citadel him because he's got a flight deck. The fun police ruin your fun. You do not get to ruin the fun police's fun. Those are the rules. It's got a flight deck. You're not allowed to citadel it. You gotta love, right, how both of the carriers, the Kearsarge and the Lexington, were both big entirely safe from getting shot at and now they've both sailed out in order to allow Thor to continue testing this theory. There is an exception to the rule by the way when you're shooting at anything with a flight deck. The only time you're allowed to score a citadel is when it's already on low enough health that the citadel is pure overkill. <laughs> That's the game's way of saying yeah look see we're not playing favourites with carriers you are actually allowed to citadel them when it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yes, I know, I'm exaggerating for comic effect, but if you stop to think about it, at least a regular warship has the decency to try to pack everything explosive below the level of the waterline wherever possible, but it's physically impossible to do that on a carrier. You've got the guts of the ship, probably below the waterline, but then everything above the waterline right up to the level of the flight deck is packed full of incendiary bombs and the weapon and fueling facilities necessary to support those incendiary bombs. Incendiary bombs? What are you talking about, Jingles? You probably know of them as aircraft, right? <laughs> A carrier is basically one massive floating citadel, right up to the level of the flight deck. But you just try landing a citadel hit on one. Good luck with that. Ooh, torpe hang on, those are deep water torpedoes. Ooh. There's a Pan-Asian cruiser lurking around here somewhere. Yeah, there's a Sejong lurking around those islands. Oh, here it comes again. I spy a smoke screen. Does that thing have a smoke screen? Oh, he's going to take one. This is going to hurt. And there's a double fire as well. Now, fortunately, no flood because the damage control is still active. And no fire from that high explosive salvo. And this high explosive salvo because the damage control is still active. I think it lasts a full 15 seconds on this thing. He's managed to go undetected. And that, that is a lot of torpedoes. How many torpedoes can that thing launch? There are destroyers right now getting torpedo envy. R oh, right. Oh, right, yeah. Well, completely understandable. You can understand why he was launching so many torpedoes around the corner of the headland up there. This is what we refer to as a target-rich environment. Difficult to miss when you've got that many... Well, I mean, it's not a battleship, it's a battle cruiser, but that many battleships stacked this close together. There go the... Those torpedoes are hilarious. 
<laughs> That's an actual thing, though. It's not a bug. Um, also, very optimistic. You're never hitting anything at that kind of range. He's been lurking around here waiting for his heel to come off cooldown. But he's getting shot at by proper guns now. Large caliber AP really hurts this thing. And of course the general all-round lack of armor makes it incredibly vulnerable uh, to even 6-inch high explosive spam. So the Duncan very definitely can't really take it, but it can dish it out. And because it's a battle cruiser and not a battle ship, the game does give it increased accuracy on these 419mm guns. So the ship can definitely dish it out, even if it can't really take it. Ooh, I see an opportunity for another kill here. Somebody suddenly got reduced to extremely low health. Again, being extremely optimistic with these funky torpedoes. Come on, baby. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. Quickly, before he recovers too much health. Yes, got him, and there's the Kraken Unleashed. That just leaves the Sunyat Sam as the most immediate threat. Well, I say just. It's got 457mm guns. 18 inch. Not 18.1 inch like the Yamato, which allows it to punch through the 32mm bow plating of almost every battleship in the game. But this is not a battleship, it's a battle cruiser. It doesn't have 32mm of bow plating. It only has 25. <laughs> there are cruisers in the game with better armor than this battleship. Um, so yeah, those 457 millimeter guns can absolutely punch through the bow plating of the Duncan and Citadel from the front because the Citadel of Thwartship's armor is also only 25 millimeters thick. Thor initially trying to knock out those 457 millimeter front gun turrets before he got clapped. Now he's going for the torpedo, which ain't going to be enough. And I think he was actually considering a ram there until he realized, well, hang on a minute. That mid turret is about to be useful. There it is. <laughs> Kill number six um, on a ship that should have been able to clap his ass cheeks from the front and yet somehow didn't. So that's nice. Thor's rosy ass cheeks remain unclapped. <laughs> At least for now. But while he did have a double fire there, and he's wisely used the damage control to prevent it. Oh, enemy submarine spotted. Uh, just out of range of his uh, airstrike depth charges. Um, he does not have a lot of health left. And that Bismarck's looking his way and licking his lips. Ooh, go for the cruiser. You're a battle cruiser. Killing cruisers is what you're for. Wait for it to straighten out and then give it the good news. Shots out. And are we going to get kill number seven? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Oh, the submarine is finally in depth charge range. Although it's on the surface, it's probably going to get nuked by the Jean Bart or something first. And that will just leave the Bismarck. But it's a Bismarck. Um, I mean, you've got good guns. But the Bismarck Citadel armor scheme, the turtleback armor arrangement, means the closer you get, the less likely it is that you're actually going to score any Citadels. And you're going to need some Citadels to kill that thing before, well, your rosy ass cheeks become well and truly clapped. You just don't have the health. And you certainly don't have the armor. And once again, that's an extremely optimistic torpedo. But hey, you never know. Even a broken clock tells the right time twice a day, but I think it is much, much more likely that you... Oh, wow, actually, you don't know, you might do this. You might just do this. No, you're not. Okay, never mind. Oh, well. Still, it was a noble attempt, and you very, very nearly took the Bismarck with you, too. Still, it was nice of you to leave the rest of your team something to do. Noble and generous. What a guy. Seven kills for Thor in the British Tier 9 Battlecruiser, HMS Duncan. I haven't unlocked this thing myself yet. Although I'm on the way. I've made it to the Renown. And the Renown's great. Or is it the Repulse? I don't know. Whatever the Tier 6 is. I get confused easily. Not just because I'm old, but because I've got them both. And they're both great. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of liking these British Battlecruisers. I mean, they're all glass cannons, but they're fast and they've got good guns. And good guns will do. So that was Thor in HMS Duncan. Seven kills on two brothers. And he didn't go up the middle. Remarkable self-restraint. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.